done here with a layout for Mad About Mini Paper Pads. Uh, this is a series where we use mini paper pads, six by six, two by two, eight by eight, six by eight, anything smaller than 12 by 12. And uh, we use them up. We find some creative ways to get those smaller pieces of paper used up and just have fun with it. And so this is also in combination with scrap timber that is being put on by uh, the Scrappy Sisters. And so Katie and Jessica put today's prompt as six by six paper pads. So coincidence, I guess so. Um, so yeah, that fits in really perfectly. So you can hop along with everybody today with all of the links down below in my description box. And then also check out the Scrap Timber playlist. It has all of the videos that people have been posting since the beginning of the month. So you can go right back to the first day of prompts. There's 30 days of prompts. And that's kind of what everyone plays along with for the whole month of September. So go and check that out as well. And yeah, I'm going to use some six by six papers, a uh, paper pad that I've had in my stash for many, many years. It's an old My Mind's Eye paper pad um, from Halloween, a very like classic looking My Mind's Eye paper collection. And I only have a few pieces of it left over. So I thought I'm going to go ahead and grab it out. Here it is right here. I kind of just have a couple of the pieces that I really liked so I'm, I'm hoarding them a little bit um, some of them are the the black and white ones which I just find really classic and easy to use and they don't necessarily have to be Halloween papers but they're in the paper pad and I put that into my Halloween stash so every time I pull them out I kind of think oh I could be using this for something else if I'm not using it for Halloween and then I just tuck it right back into my Halloween stash so it never actually gets put anywhere else but as you saw I think there was only maybe eight papers left maybe seven um, not that many so I'm gonna go ahead and put a pretty good dent in some of these papers today and uh, I thought I would try something a little bit different so some of my go-to's that's what I like to show you guys in this series is doing things like taking four different patterns and piecing them together to make a 12 by 12 background. Ooh, we are having a crazy lightning storm outside right now. Um, so if I am distracted, it's because I am watching this crazy light show happening outside my, my window. Uh, I promise I will do my best not to be distracted by mother nature, <laughs> But uh, yeah, so I, you know, I do the four different squares, kind of four different quadrants. Um, I love to do the, you know, six by six papers all layered up behind each other and kind of making this really lovely layered mat around a photo. Um, but one of the other things I love to do with my six by six papers is when they have images like this here, all these little labels uh, that make up one whole page, they are just really fun to fussy cut and, and turn into embellishments. And sometimes I do this with 12 by 12 papers too, and pretty much any paper I have, but sometimes when I'm getting down to the very last bits and pieces of a collection, if I have a paper like this, I will go ahead and just fussy cut, sit in front of the TV, watch a movie, you know, whatever it is that you like to do, listen to an audio book, um, and just fussy cut out all of the images and throw them in with my ephemera. I don't actually have any ephemera from this particular collection. I only had the six by six paper pad. Um, so I, I didn't do that to kind of kill this kit, but I figured I would go ahead and show you that this is definitely something I love to do with six by six papers. The image images are usually very similar to what you would get on the 12 by 12 papers in the collection, or I should stop saying 12 by 12 papers and say just the full sized papers uh, because some collections are only made in 
you know, different sizes than that. But the the larger papers have larger images and then they're kind of shrunk down on these little six by six papers. And so you get these tiny, cute little embellishments and lots of little words and things. So here I'm cutting up this page that was these little kind of labels with different Halloween words in them. I just cut a whole bunch of them out. I didn't know at this point exactly what the plan was, but I knew I was going to be able to use this to kind of embellish um, and and make little clusters or something around my picture because I really did want all of that mixed media to kind of pop these bright colors. I actually had hoped that they were going to work directly onto that black paper, but the paper I'm using is almost like a like a fabric paper or a rice paper and it was super super porous and so all of my little acrylic uh, paints were soaking into it rather than sitting on top of it and I wanted that for the texture I thought the texture looked really super cool but I was hoping I could just get away with a black background and that didn't work so I went ahead and smudged some white on there so that my colors could really pop and I could get uh, almost like that neon feel that you see in my picture uh, and so of course I did that first I didn't explain that to you but I went ahead and I did my mixed media first so that I could set it to the side and let it dry while I went ahead and fussy cut out all of those little bits and pieces um, and then just to give my picture a little extra helping hand because it is so dark I decided to mat it and I had these I don't know they're not paper in the traditional paper sense. They're, they actually feel a little bit more like a cardboard, a thin cardboard, but definitely more like a cardboard than a paper. But it was a six by six pack that I got at uh, Dollar Tree. I know I say that a lot, but honestly, I, I find lots of fun little things in there to kind of beef up my stash. And it just gives me something different to play with that maybe not everyone else is using. And so I love picking up little things like this. And also because these are the types of things where I'll use a few bits and pieces of these cool kind of mixed media watercolor cardboard papers I don't know how else to describe them whoa that was a big flash holy moly um sorry about that <laughs> um but I'll use a few of those but anything that's left over it's just so nice to have that little stash of stuff that if my little guy comes down and wants to hang out in the craft room and do something with me, I know I can give him some of that to play with and it's kind of fun and bright colors and I don't mind so much. I only paid a dollar fifty for it. So if he ends up using up the whole thing or whatever happens, happens, I'm okay with that. Or if my nieces come over or if, you know, one of the schools or the daycare asks for some stuff. I know I have things like that on hand that I can I can part with without being overly upset by it. So um, I love to grab those. And these these colors were just kind of bright enough and close enough to the neon that you see in my photo that I could go ahead and kind of matte it and just give a little pop of those extra colors so my picture didn't blend too, too much. And then here, I just wanted to kind of make everything look old and rickety. I didn't want anything to look kind of perfect and lined up. So um, I put down all of those labels at the top and the bottom. It's kind of a comfort thing for me to make some sort of frame or border or outline on my layout. So I went ahead and did that and none of them are cut perfectly. I did cut them with my trimmer and then I went back in and kind of cut some of them down and made some of them just not look quite so perfect. And then with those couple scraps of paper, I just wanted some pops of orange and kind of tore those edges. They're not lined up. They're not really, um, you know, centered or anything like that. So they all just kind of look a little rickety. I tore the edges and then I inked those edges with some brown. Um, that one is the espresso. I know it's called something else. Ground espresso maybe by Tim Holtz. 
Um, so I just kind of inked those edges to make them look brown and tarnished. Uh, I took that one piece from the tw uh, the six by six paper, sorry, that had all of the words. If I kind of looked, once I looked at the paper, I, I found the lines where it started to repeat itself again, going vertically and horizontally. And so I was able to cut out that little square and kind of give myself a bunch of Halloween words. And then I crumpled it up a little bit and bent it and also distressed those edges um, and then I did the same thing with those little labels. So I showed you that, but I wasn't explaining it to you as I was doing it. I took my, my ink and I was inking up the edges and on some of them, I just crumpled it on some of them. I ripped them a little bit. Um, some of them, I kind of just inked the edges and others. I took my finger and dunked it. Oh, can you guys hear sirens now? Wow, I don't know what's going on outside, but it is clearly a wild time out there. I apologize for that background noise. Um, so yes, on some of them, I kind of like bent it. So there was a really strong uh, crease in it. And then I inked up that crease or I got, you know, parts of it blotched blotched is that the right word that's what we're gonna go with I just really distressed them and made them look old um, and then I even took my inking tool and smudged it across some of that white paint so that the white didn't look quite so bright and clean it kind of looks a little distressed and inked up too uh, and then without really any rhyme or reason I'm just kind of plonking down some of those little labels and some of these little uh, a lot of them are like poison well they all are they're they're warning labels I guess you could call them um, I'm just plonking them all down wherever I think one's gonna fit kind of tucking it in nothing is perfect nothing is lined up some of them are going over my photo mats some of them are tucked in behind the orange uh, kind of background papers just everything looks a little haphazard and just old and rickety that is the feeling that I was going for and this is a page that already there are several other pages done with um, that same Halloween so I don't really need to put a title or too much journaling or anything like that so I just wanted to go ahead and have fun and I definitely think that this is the kind of technique you could go to if you have a bunch of scraps of um, six by six paper pad or sorry let me try that again if you have a bunch of scraps of six by six papers because when something's 12 by 12 and you're kind of cutting up scraps you can stretch the size of those scraps quite often a lot further but with six by six it's already kind of small and then when you start to cut it down and you know take pieces of just one paper your scraps are are small and so sometimes it's hard to know what exactly to do with them. We all kind of hold on to them, but we don't necessarily know exactly what to do with them. So if you can fussy cut out any of those images that you might see, follow some flower patterns, leaves, um, even use punches. If it's not really a pattern that could be fussy cut out, you could punch out some shapes. It just stretches your six by six paper into something that you can use as embellishment. And then I finished mine off with some sequins and that is it that is my layout thank you guys so so much for watching i really appreciate it subscribe if you haven't already and until next time happy scrapping bye